things to come to grips with is that human beings are human beings are human beings. And wherever we go where we are not at home with our landscape, if the creatures have not co-evolved with us, if we have not co-evolved a sustainable relationship with the creatures and with our technology and the creatures, problems occur. This is a little difficult for some people to take, but I think it's an important first step for recognizing those of us, in fact, probably all of us in this room, who are firmly rooted in Western industrial culture, whether we want to be or not. This is our culture. This is our roots. I work with a scientist by the name of Paul Martin, who in the 1960s came up with the overkill hypothesis. And that is that he was positing that instead of some sort of climate change at the end of the Ice Ages, that was the reason that the saber-toothed tigers and the mammoths and the mastodons and the ground sloths and many other creatures went, went extinct, that instead of it climate change, that it was humans. Frontier humans, not Native Americans, but the first humans to come across the Bering Land Bridge into North America, frontiers people, before they learned to become native, before the creatures learned to deal with us. This was the overkill hypothesis. And the hypothesis is that about 13,000 years ago, this is why we have all the animals that go out. The Clovis culture, the, the so-called mammoth hunters with the large spear points, these were the ones. And the, those spear points are seen all over North America, and they went out over the course of about 300 years. It's about how long it took for this trophic cascade of, distinct, of extinction to happen. It wasn't something that we wanted to hear, right? that people could do this. It's only Western industrial people that are bad. We're the ones causing the sixth major mass extinction. What's happened since the 1960s is that glaciologists have discerned that the glaciers came down and moved back and came down and moved back, never quite as far as where we are now in Kentucky, but came down and moved back 22 different times. The only difference from this interglacial, that is warm period, from previous interglacials is that there's one new animal now, and that's the human. What also um, sustained them in this is that they found where everywhere in the world when humans moved out of Africa, and particularly moved into outlying areas, not Europe and not Asia, but outlying areas with technology in which they could kill effectively at a distance, Mass extinction, not mass extinction, extinction of the massive occurred. Do you get the difference? The big creatures. Began here in Australia, correlated with the first humans. Those of you in the front, you can see silhouettes of the large creatures here. Nine out of every ten genus, genera, of large creatures went extinct in Australia when the first people showed up. And their dingoes, and the dogs that they brought with them. Correlation, not necessarily cause, but correlation. Into the Mediterranean islands, do you know there used to be dwarf hippos and dwarf elephants and mastodons on all of the Mediterranean islands? Correlated when there was first charcoal of humans showing up with the boating technology to move into the Mediterranean islands, that's when these creatures go out, around 10,000 years ago for many of them. Here's something of North America. Cuba's part of North America, right? Cuba did not lose its giant ground sloths until 6,000 years ago, in contradistinction to 13,000 years ago in mainland North America. This is a big reason why the climatologists have a difficult time explaining that, oh, it was climate that took out the animals. And then, just about eight years ago, scientists studied the mammoth tusks on an island to the north of Siberia, quite a ways offshore to the north of Siberia. And at that time, when they studied radiometric dating, they said, oh my gosh, these mammoths went extinct only 4,000 years ago. Correlated when the first humans showed up. Moving over to Madagascar, off the coast of Africa, 2,000 years ago, this one is just the correlation is more its absolute cause. Not only the, um, the giant elephant bird, but the uh, lemur. There was a lemur that was so large, the size of a gorilla, it could no longer climb trees. It was ground-based. 
And tortoises the size of our Galapagos tortoises went out when the first peoples came to Madagascar. Hawaii, 1,500 years ago, when the Polynesians came with their pigs for the first time, all the flightless birds went out, a stunning variety of ibises and ducks and geese that were flightless went out at that time. Finally, 800 years ago, New Zealand, with the ancestors of the Maori people, the moa and the biggest eagle of all time. This eagle was able to actually kill an adult moa by breaking its neck with, its, with landing on its feet. These went out, as well as some other things on the island of New Zealand. That's the depressing part. That's what Earth teaches us when we open our eyes and open our ears to be willing to listen to bad news, things that we don't want to hear, things that are counterintuitive. This is the kind of thing we hear. It's very depressing in a way. This is what humans do. Any time that we enter a place where the creatures that did not co-evolve with us had never experienced another creature that could kill at a distance, that is thrown spears. Good news of this is that our culture, where we come from, Western industrial culture, is doing the same thing that humans have always done when it enters a frontier landscape with new technology. And when you increase your technology and have a new technology, that means even if you stay in your landscape, it's a frontier landscape again, right? New technology. We are the first humans that, instead of being faced with the limits of what we do when we come into a landscape, have an opportunity to make a conscious choice and say, yes, we will become native now. We are no longer a frontier people. We want to learn how to live and cohabit this place, this continent, this land with the other creatures here. I find that immensely good news because it gives me a way to be willing to deal with where we are right now as Western industrial peoples and not have to step back, not have to step back into another time, very hard to get to. In a way, there was no golden age when you first humans came into a landscape. The golden age lies ahead of us, if it's there at all. And we have the opportunity to make that choice to become native.